Hey everyone, Miss Lasseter here. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about how to make an infographic for class. I'm gonna go through several ways that are easy and free for how to make an infographic if you have it assigned for a class project. I'm gonna start with Canva, which is one of my favorite infographic making tools, then talk about PictoChart and Vengage in this video. As you follow along, hopefully you've already reviewed what an infographic is, how to design an infographic, the research and the data that you need to gather in order to make an infographic. But if you haven't done those steps already, make sure you check with the requirements of the assignment and look at some of the resources I've posted below. But let's say you've already decided you need to make an infographic, you know the information you have, you've sort of drafted out your ideas already, and you're ready to get started. Well, let's go ahead and go to Canva and see what we can do. So the best ways to make an infographic, I think, especially if you're starting out as a beginner, are to use some of the templates that are provided to you on sites like Canva. You can even search by color palette if that's something you want to do. Canva is super easy to use. PictoChart used to be my favorite, but I think with the newer updates that Canva's gone through, it's actually one of my favorite ways to make an infographic. Infographic. If you scroll through their options, they've got a lot of cool designs that you can build off of to create your infographics. Remember, a really good way to create great infographics is to stick to one color palette, maybe two or three main colors with some secondary colors, and to keep your fonts simple and legible. This means staying away from more complex fonts, script fonts, handwriting, calligraphy kind of stuff, because that's going to make it harder for your infographic to be read. Remember, the purpose of an infographic is to correct information across in a visually appealing way to your audience. So we can also create a blank infographic in Canva, but what I'm going to do is choose one that I feel like could be easy to build off of. And let's say I want to do an infographic comparing prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Comparison is a great reason to create an infographic because you can easily contrast different ideas next to each other. Remember, another best practice for infographics is keeping text light and making it very diagram, image, and figure based. So whatever you choose, try to pick something that doesn't have big chunks of paragraphs, instead ways you can visually combine or share things side by side. So here what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep this color palette because it's kind of nice, and I'm just going to go ahead and start editing the text. So up here, I can click on the text, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, I can click on the text that I want to use, and just go ahead and start typing. So like I said, I'm comparing prokaryotic versus eukaryotic organisms here. It's easy for me to resize the text either by dragging the box that the text is on or by changing the font size itself. I can also use these guidelines to help me center and arrange the objects that I want. It's a really good practice in infographics to align all of your text in one particular way or another and make it easy for the eye to follow and read. Now I don't have to use this template word for word and space for space, so what I'm going to do here is just delete this section. I can also play around with the color palette that they offer me or create my own color palette as well. I kind of like that green, but let's go back to the original palette that was given to us. It's always good to zoom out while you're practicing creating infographics because then you get a fuller view of what your entire infographic looks like and to make sure you don't have too much stuff clumped up next to each other in one section. So make a habit of zooming out and zooming in at different times during your infographic design. Now what I'm going to do is see if Canva has any free icons that I can use. Oh great, so there's a eukaryotic cell, perfect. And what I'm going to do is center it over the eukaryotic section. And then I'm going to try to find to see if they have a good bacterial cell, because that's a type of prokaryotic cell. Notice I'm not searching the words eukaryotic and prokaryotic here. I'm keeping my text simple because I know that their image library isn't necessarily scientific. It's more something related to common ideas and things. Now what I love about these two images here is that I can actually edit the colors to go along with my color palette. Remember, like I said earlier, you want to try to keep your colors simple and consistent on your infographics, so sticking to two or three main colors with a few secondary colors is a really good idea. So now that I've edited my images, I have an example of a bacterial cell, which is prokaryotic, and a eukaryotic cell here. What I'm going to do is go ahead and add a little text beneath them to make sure people know which side is which. <laughs> And remember, information in an infographic has to be reliable and accurate. So make sure if you're using any sources or if you're getting any information, you're displaying that information both correctly and you're citing those sources um, the way that your teacher asks you to do that. So make sure you check with the project instructions and follow the guidelines that your teacher provides to you for how to cite sources in an infographic. A lot of scientific research is going to use APA formatting, and I have a whole video on that, which I'll link in the description below if you want to check that out. All right, now let's see what I can do with these spaces. Now again, I don't have to put text or images images in the exact same spots as this template, but it's nice to use as a guideline. So I'm going to go through here and talk about the main things that are different between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells, but I want to keep my information short and sweet and to the point, so I'm not going to write out full sentences. That's not a good idea for an infographic. Keep your text light, keep your ideas short. 
Again, if I search for bacteria, I don't have that many options to choose from, but I do know that I can find an oval pretty easily. And so this could be a really simple representation of a bacterial cell. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it is a good image-based piece of information I can use to convey my ideas. Now I'm gonna look for a plant image, because plants are included in eukaryotic cells, and again, I wanna make sure I can change it to the color palette of my entire infographic. All right, and then I can add as much information I need as I go. So I'm not gonna go through and do this entire infographic for you guys, because I know you wanna be able to see the other tools that we have as far as making infographics go. But when I'm ready to share my infographic, I can do a couple different things. One, make sure that you view the whole thing and that everything is aligned and it's the way you want it before you download it or try to share it anywhere. Next, I can share a direct link so someone can access this from the web. And you always wanna check it in incognito mode just to make sure the sharing settings have been enabled and it's not somebody trying to get into your Canva account. You can't just copy and paste the URL at the top of the screen. I can also download this infographic as an image file even with a free account on Canva. So that's pretty cool. It may not be the highest resolution but it's still going to work pretty well. So I'll go here to download. PNG is probably the best and you can go ahead and download it but just make sure you check with your teacher for the requirements for how they want your infographic saved or shared. Then I'll check it out. Let's see what it looks like. Beautiful. All right, obviously it's not finished, but that's pretty good as far as infographics go. Again, there's lots of templates to choose from and you can Google infographics along your particular topic if you wanna see other things. Next up, I'm gonna show you PictoChart, which is another great infographic tool. They do have some interesting templates. A lot of their templates though are behind a paywall, so you just wanna be careful and you might wanna create an infographic from scratch. So this was a guide I made for teachers. Again, a little bit text heavy, but I have this sort of lesson overview, which is a good example of how to show a process with a visual. So there's a lot of interesting tools on PictoChart that you can include. For example, the timelines. So if you check out the timeline templates, you can see a bunch of different things that you could add and then add to your theme. One of my favorite tools on PictoChart is the map tool, where I can select a particular country or part of the world. And then what I can do is I can change the colors of different regions or states in this case to represent different pieces of information. So if I wanted to add a couple of different states on the East Coast, for example, and highlight those, I could find them in the list, change the color, and then that color of the state would be changed when I get to my main infographic. Another interesting feature of PictoChart is that these infographics can be actually interactive. So if I wanted to include some data along with the states I'm highlighting, you can see that population column there. I could change the data in there in order for someone to hover over it and then see a different population value or some other data point that you would include. So these are great for making different types of maps or information you wanna convey as far as a geographic infographic goes. As soon as I'm done, you can see I've, there's the hover feature and I've inserted this map into my infographic which really has nothing to do with that map. There's other types of charts, so if you want to include some interesting data points, you can do that here. Canva has charts as well, there's just not as many variables that you can manipulate for their charts. When I'm ready to share, I can create a live link just like in Canva, or I can download. All right, the last infographic tool I'm going to show you is Vengage. You can also create infographics for free on this site. There are some limitations as far as paywalls are concerned, but um, it's another tool that I know a lot of students like to use as far as creating infographics. So they also have some interesting templates as well. You can browse the free templates if you'd like, but we're just going to go ahead and get started with an infographic. So for here I've searched science-based infographics <laughs> and I'm going to use the science one just to demonstrate some things that we can do within Vengage. They have a nice tutorial you can follow if you want to learn some of their tools and tricks on the site and then Vengage has lots of different charts and different tools you can insert as far as that goes for your infographic. Here's a map of Canada and again very similar to PictoChart but I can edit different regions to show different colors or data points within my infographic. When I'm ready to share I can either publish it and get a link or I can download as well. Remember to keep the main design guidelines for infographics, keep the text light, make sure it's legible, use simple color palettes and font themes and keep those colors and fonts consistent throughout your infographic. Make sure you have correct information and you've cited it correctly according to your teacher's guidelines and think about the message or problem that you wanna convey and the best way to do that visually as you're creating your infographic. Good luck as you are designing. I hope this video has been helpful. Give it a like if you can and I'll see everybody later.